I came into this world in the late 1950s, right in the heart of the English Midlands. My paternal grandfather was born in the late 1890s, and the earliest words I remember were his, but in French, carried on Grandad's lips all the way from the First War trenches of Flanders. Little did I realise, when I was growing up, that many words and phrases I heard in my young life have fascinating histories, many of them military. As a kid, I often wondered why I was as dim as a Tok H lamp. Well, what on earth was a moaning mini? And why, oh why, a dear, poor old Benjamin, Gondu Lally. In 1977, a close family friend, the ornithological artist Richard Richardson, passed away. The last will and testament of Richard Allen Richardson. To Michael Grucock, my mother's bible, my signed copy of Tarka the Otter, my decorative Japanese box. I was so muted and distressed by our friend's passing that I paid only cursory attention to the bequests. And only recently did I look at them again. So Dulali is a real place in India. And my friend, who was in the Norfolk Regiment and his dog Willow, had been there between 1944 and 1945. It was once a notorious place where some time expired and transiting British soldiers went crazy with heat and boredom and worse. Hence the saying, gone Dulali. To the Alexander Library of Field Ornithology at Oxford, my personal bird diaries relating to India. Hello everybody, I know you all like a bit of a sing-song, make yourselves comfortable, play a few of the good old songs, and I want you all to join in and sing, really sing. All ready? Away we go, let's all go down the strand.
I've come to India to see the birds, the people, the architecture, the sublime collisions of race and religion, of languages and trades, to see for myself the places that appear in the diary where man and dog walked 74 years ago. Really am going to a place called Dulali. Dulali, sometimes called Devlali, is in the western state of Maharashtra, about 100 miles north of Mumbai. Soldiers transited by rail from what was then called Bombay to their tented camps, whilst others waited in the heat of Dulali, sometimes as long as a year, to make the return journey home. Dulali is still military. Remnants of the soldiers' transit camp are in use by the Indian artillery, and the military farm where my friend worked is still in operation. But some old buildings are in decay, and the stories they could tell are gradually turning to dust. So, I'm in Dulali, but much of the town is within the military cantonment, and use of cameras is restricted. But I did get a marvellous opportunity to look around. But before I finally returned home, I wanted to walk where my friend and his dog Willow walked. Perhaps where they sought solace from the crushing might of army life. And on that final day, to see the pages of the diaries come to life.
Thank you.